Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Ramoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. This is the podcast where we have digital discussions from the worlds of social media, sports, and pop culture. I am joined today by two members of uh, Team Canada's Women's national team for ice hockey. I'm quickly going to introduce the panel. We have first, uh, we have, it's our second time on the show. We have forward Natalie Spooners with us. Natalie, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me again. No problem. And we have, it was the first time on the uh, national women's team this year. Aaron Ambrose is with us. Aaron, welcome to Pop Alternative. Thank you. Happy to be here. No problem. So let's start with you. First year playing for Team Canada. Um, when you got the call, what was the first thing that kind of came to your mind? Uh, I was emotional. Uh, I got really excited. Obviously, playing in a world championship uh, was a big step for me and a really big accomplishment. Um, and it's been a it's been a little bit of a, a trek to get there. I've been in the program for uh, this is my ninth year, so um, to get there was really really exciting. Um, and I knew it was a big step for me and moving forward in my career personally. And then obviously, just getting to represent your country anytime is is a pretty special feeling. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, I guess it was, I guess, was it also an easier transition when you were on the team with some of your uh, teammates on the Furies in the CWHL, like Natalie Spooner? Absolutely. Uh, being there with Spooner and then Renata Fast as well, like Renata and I have gone through quite a bit together uh, lately. And uh, having the two of them there just gives you a little bit of comfort level. Um, I've looked up to Spoons for quite some time and then getting the chance to play with her this year and see her everyday habits and see how she conducts herself both on and off the ice. Um, she's such a professional in everything that she does. And um, again, such a person to look up to and was just happy to be there. And it's pretty nice being able to call her one of my good friends now. Absolutely. And uh, Natalie Spooner, it's her second time back on Pop Turnative. What, what, what have you been up to since? I understand uh, she's got back from a uh, vacation, but uh, doing some hockey programs as well, right? Um, yeah, so I got pretty busy summer coming up, so I took a nice week vacation, and then actually on Tuesday I am going up to none of it with Project North to hand out equipment um, to underprivileged kids that you know don't have hockey equipment up there. With the Clarkson Cup, which is our Steve Shell Stanley Cup, um, and then I have my hockey school later in the summer. Um, we'll have Team Canada boot camp. We got a lot of training coming up um, with the Olympics coming up. Cool. Clarkson Cup, that's where I met you. Yeah. Two years ago. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. So I, f- I find it interesting, too, um, because, Aaron, it's a, it, you said you've been with the program for nine years, but this was your first time playing uh, for Team Canada. And um, I ask this question to a lot of uh, athletes that come on my show. Um, what are some of the misconceptions or things that people don't really know about your kind of day-to-day routines of being like, you know, an athlete um, representing your country at a big stage. Are there some misconceptions where you think people would think things about how you train or um, that people don't really know about? Cause I'm always looking for kind of like the behind the scenes kind of deets that a lot of people wouldn't really know about. Yeah. Well, I think, it's changed a lot. Like since I first got in the program, like when I first got in, I was 15 years old and obviously um, I've matured since then and grown up, not just physically, but also just as a person. Um, Mm -hmm. I've gone through college. I've graduated high school and college. And um, this year was just a different one being out uh, in the real world, really. Um, Like I lived here at my aunt's uh, and then just trained full time. So getting kind of, into the routine of training and skating with the national team uh, twice a week. And then our fury skates um, it's, that's where I was really fortunate to be with spoons because spoons kind of helped guide me in a, in a lot of different ways in which I wasn't really sure maybe how to find my way at times. Um, So just kind of conducting yourself and finding the things that work for you uh, in order to make you successful, both on and off the ice or, Sometimes you don't know. It's not like everybody has the answers written right in front of them, but sometimes it takes a little bit of trial and error to figure it all out. Yeah, you had a very successful uh, career at Clarkson University as well, right? Yeah, uh, we won a national championship in 2014, which was pretty special. And uh, yeah, it was a great four years there, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And um, Spoons, you've been with uh, the national program for a while. You've played in the Olympics. You've played in multiple world championships. 
as you know, the whether you would like to call yourself, you know, the veteran. Um, what what are some of the like what what's the advice that you give? Because you 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 were once in their shoes, like Aaron's for Aaron and, and Renata. Those were the first year playing. You know, you were that happened to you one day. So there's skills that, and there's some you know life lessons that you could possibly trance over that for them. For sure. I mean, I think. The one big thing I take out of it is there's like so many ups and downs and there's times when you think like, I am never going to make this team. Like my first, um, I always tell this funny story to like girls whose first tournament it is because it really can't get like worse than my first tournament. <laughs> <laughs> In two, that, it must have been 2008. It was my first Four Nations Cup and uh, we were in Lake Placid. And so I played like a little bit throughout the tournament, but I, I played like fourth line and then the finals came and we were against the U.S. and I really didn't play throughout the game. And then I really, I think I only made the team because I had a really good shootout move. So I, they put me in the shootout. So I was like, this is my big moment. I need to prove myself. And I went to like cut back in front of the net and I just fell right into the goalie. Oh. And then those pictures were all over the internet of just me falling into better. And I was like, I didn't make the team again for like three years. <laughs> <laughs> So I was like, guys, you know, it can't get worse than that. So as long as you don't fall in the goalie in a shootout, you're fine. Oh, my God. <laughs> and we know That's... that we don't ever have to worry about that as Renata and I because we're demons. So we know that we're not getting picked for a shootout. So really, we're just we're already yeah. set up better than Spoons was. So that's why when I introduced you as Aaron Ambrose, I was about, like, I knew you were a deep, but for some reason I was about to say forward, and I didn't, so I'm just like, Aaron Ambrose. <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad. I'm not proud to be a forward. Yeah. Um, and, and, and Natalie, you're all over the social media. The selfies, the selfie game is strong. It's always strong. <laughs> and I feel like that, that, that's a thing with the, the women's national team now. You guys are taking selfies everywhere. Yeah, picture day is like a must-have selfie day. Um, it's picture day selfie. like every day with you guys. Yeah, I guess almost. <laughs> we like the selfies. Erin, <laughs> uh, how did you adapt to, you mentioned like the on the ice, but the off the ice as well, you know, you're kind of with, there. a lot of these girls have played together yeah. um, on the national stage for many years, right? Yeah. And you're coming in as a rookie. Um, was the transition hard? Um, I know you know a lot of these girls from the CWHL and maybe yeah. NCAA as well, but was it like talk about that transition? Well, that's what makes it easier is kind of knowing everybody. And um, I mean, I've talked about looking up to Spooner, but Laura Fortino is somebody that I've always looked up to as well. Um, and then getting to play with her, like I played in a Four Nations in 2014 in Kamloops, um, which was my first time on the senior team. And um, that kind of got my foot in the door and I started to make kind of those friendships and start those friendships with people. Um, and I think that helps especially when I got to my first world championship this year, I felt a lot more comfortable just in myself and where I was on the team. And um, as much as I was a rookie, I definitely felt more comfortable, comfortable about being on the team and with the girls. So I think that helps. And I think that kind of translates onto the ice because you're not as tentative. You're not kind of, and that's not really a word that comes to mind when people think of me. I'm not very a tentative or quiet person most of the time. So uh, it was nice to get out of my shell a little bit, but definitely having those friendships and stuff makes a world of a difference when you actually get there. And uh, Spoons, you were one of the assistant captains um, for the last uh, Worlds. And did you, because Mary Philippe Pune was the captain and you were one of the assistants. Who was the other assistant? Um, Haley Irwin and Brianne Jenner. Yeah, so did you foresee yourselves as it was like crucial to kind of make sure that, you know, the new players were settled in properly. Like, did you see yourselves as kind of those leaders that kind of not necessarily, not like by no means like babysit, but kind of lead the way a little bit for these girls that came into the program? Uh, I mean, I think for, for some of us, it just comes natural to, yeah. you know, like I think I talk to everyone on the team and, and get along with most of the people. And um, I mean, I also think it is important to make, the new people on the team feel comfortable because we want them playing their best um, and not feeling nervous going on the ice or like they don't fit in. I remember my first tournament, I felt like I did not fit in. Um, mm -hmm. And eventually I got to play with Wick and she was like, don't worry what everyone else thinks, just like play your game. And that was like the best advice anyone could have said to me at that time because I was like, what is people thinking of me out there? Like they probably think I am terrible. Um, but really like I was just playing like everyone else was and yeah. Um, I think that that's really important just to pass down to them and make sure that, you know, they know that they deserve to be here and they're good enough to be here and that, like, they can be that person to go out there and make the impact and score that goal for us. 
Oh, it's absolutely, yeah. We had uh, Haley Wickenheiser on the show in the past, and uh, <laughs> just to hear some of her stories and her perspectives on things, it was crazy. I was yeah. a little starstruck, I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> yeah, she's a really cool person, she's yeah, got lots of good stories. Yeah. <laughs> and when we had you on last time, you talked a little bit about the, um, you and Megan went on the Amazing Race, mm-hmm. and uh, we, I had uh, Hal Johnson um, from Body Break on oh, the yeah. show, like, last month, and he was... Mm-hmm. We didn't talk about we didn't talk about Body Break uh, about Amazing Race as much because they just did that Santa Clara Diet Netflix um, promo. They did they did something with Netflix, so we talked more about that. But um, I I just had like a, a quick question. Like you just went. Um, do you find now when you go on vacations are you like an expert after going on on trips? Uh, I wouldn't say like an expert, but. I mean, I already travel enough with, like, hockey and stuff that I don't mind traveling. I find it not very stressful. But I think, like, when I do go on vacations now, like, I want to find the cool things to do there. Yeah. You know, like, I want to be doing, like, like do an excursion or, like, do something that I would probably never have thought to do, like, if I was just going away. No, absolutely. And, yeah, no, I just find that funny because it's, it's, like, once you go on that show, you've been all these places and you have to get places. You would think you'd be, like, an expert for travel like you know what to, where to go you never like miss a flight yeah well i don't miss flights anyways at least i hope i don't ever <laughs> but uh and yeah, as pop turn is more like a social media centric show and Aaron, i find it interesting because like we mentioned your first year playing um at the worlds and um you're 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 newer to a lot of people that follow um that would only let's say so for people that you know follow the cwhl a lot of people will know who you are but for people that just maybe watch, you know, the Worlds on TSN every year, the rookies don't have as much, there's not as much familiarity um, from the returning players. But I saw, like, on your social media, on your Twitter, you have over, like, 1,000 followers. And um, do you, f- yeah, no, you, it's good. <laughs> That's a good number. <laughs> there was a weird pause there where you kind of no, laughed. No, 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 it's, it's, I continue, though, continue. Why, it's cause, uh, is it because Spooner has, like, 40 <laughs> no, 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 get to my point once you okay no but my point is how has social media um impacted um your career as an athlete well the reason i was joking or giggling a little bit is because renata and i always talk about it and we did a i don't know if you saw it but we did a hers or me Um, i saw that yeah and she said who's more popular on social media and without hesitation she said me and said because i like the attention more Um, but I've always been, I've always been a big social media kid. Um, my family kind of gives me a hard time about it sometimes just because I don't often get off my phone because I'm looking at social media so much. Um, but I think it's a really good way to interact with fans. And I mean, since coming out of college and getting, um, not only to, uh, the Furies, but to the national team, I think that you can really connect with fans. And, um, like there was one little girl that came to, uh, Plymouth and I don't know why she, managed to take a liking to me of all people but uh she her parents were sending me things and they've sent me a bunch of mail since then so it's just kind of a nice thing to do um i know whenever my mom sees me interacting with a little kid makes her tear up she's also an emotional person but it just it makes her happy to see sometimes and i i know if that happened to me when i was five years old that i would have been over the moon ecstatic so um it's nice to give back every so often. And then, yeah, I got to try to compete with Natalie Spooner on social media. So I got to somehow try to up my game every time. And that's why I try to put her in posts whenever I can so I can steal her followers. I don't even think, I don't even think she follows me back. Probably doesn't follow me either. It's I'm okay. pretty sure I do. No, she doesn't, you don't follow me on Twitter, but it's, that's okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll follow you after. I didn't say it for that. but uh, No, I, I think you follow me on Instagram, but I don't think Twitter... But like your 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 DM your DMs aren't even open on Twitter. That's why I like I contacted you. I think on Instagram or Facebook. Had a girl. Oh, Facebook. Yeah. That's another thing. What do you guys think about that? What do you think about this? Because I had a conversation with a few players um, from the CCHL, which is their uh, it's like Junior A, and a lot of them are going to NCAA about um, the access. And a lot of them are just afraid of the access. They're just afraid. Sometimes they don't even realize that they have their DMs open. So like people are just like messaging them and have access. The access is like some it's a double edged sword. Spoons, like what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean I think um there's always gonna be, I guess, weird people on the internet that you don't really know, but 
Um, there's also going to be those little girls that just want to reach out and ask you mm. a question or tell you, you know, they watched your game and they thought you played great uh, or something like that. So um, I think you can kind of filter through them and find the ones that are the good ones and then the other ones just kind of push them aside and try not to acknowledge them because <laughs> mm -hmm. they could be mean or they could be just something you don't really want to read. Well, no, there's many people that – and I had I had um, like Rob Mixer. He's not with them anymore, but he was with the Columbus Blue Jackets social media because we I have a social media background, so I always have social media people come on the show. Aaron, mm -hmm. so last time Spoons was on, she was on with me and Rachel Schwartz, who does cool. the social media for the Islanders in the mm -hmm. NHL. So when Rob Mixer was telling me when he was on with Columbus that like uh, William Carlson didn't even realize his Twitter DMs were open, and he would like get like notifications uh -oh. like all the time. And he didn't even realize they were open, right? So yeah, it and I honestly think it's split. Like Aaron, you said you were like really big on social media. Like based, I've talked to enough athletes on this show and at events to make a consensus that it's split down the middle in terms of whether athletes want to use social media mm -hmm. or not. Absolutely, it's split down the middle. Yeah, and I think it just kind of depends on the person. Um, I, I think it's a good way for especially it might be tougher for females at times to maybe get the recognition sometimes. Um, and I'm not saying it's a way to brag about yourself, but it's also a way to get yourself out there. Um, and sometimes that can be more difficult, but there are so many benefits to when you do get out there. And um, I mean, I uh, started kind of helping it with, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the, pro uh, the product Clap Bomb. It's yeah. a hand deodorizer. So I reached out to them and I, I'm good friends now with the guys that run a man. And uh, I reached out to them just to kind of get involved with their product. And um, some people ask why I reach out to places, and I'm just like, why not, right? It's an opportunity, and it's something to just get my name out there. And, um, and it's a lot of fun for me. I want to do something in business and in sport when I'm done, so why not start now? And, I mean, the worst that can happen is somebody can say no, and, okay, move on. And that's, that's it. It's not like it's going to keep me awake at night. It's not like it's going to wreck my or hurt my career in any means. And, um, I think that's something that uh, is just how I am. and I mean, I totally respect people that aren't the same way as I am. And, um, I mean, as similar as Spooner and I are kind of in being outspoken on social media, I bet you were completely different with other things too. So, I mean, it it varies by person for sure. And I find that interesting too because what you said about um, – People are not saying, uh, like, worst comes to worst, they say no. I kind of use that same approach, too, when I'm booking podcast guests. Yeah. Because worst comes to worst, they say no. But the thing is, I can't be afraid to ask because most of the time, they have said yes. Like, I remember when Spooner said she would do it, I was, like, a little, like, I was, I was excited and pumped. But I was a bit surprised because you had a lot going on at the time. So I was like, wow, like, she's making time for this. That's awesome. <laughs> That's how good Spooner is. And, yeah, but Spooner, you, you also, from the business um, side of things, you, you have a lot of endorsements. You do a lot of programs with um, a lot, like, you're, doing, you're going to Nunavut and you do a lot of programs. You're promoting it all. You're really one of those athletes. I'm not just saying this because you're on my show. Like, I, I really mean it. Like, you, Charles Hamlet, and there's, like, a bunch of Olympic athletes that are very good at marketing what, what's going on in their life and what ventures they're in on social media. Yeah, and, I mean, I, I yeah. think people do get excited to, like, see, I guess, what you're doing daily. I mean, people know we go on the ice and we train and we play hockey, but it's like, who are you outside of hockey and what are some of the things that you give your time to? So um, I think people like to hear about that and like to know about that. So uh, a post or a picture every once in a while, I think people get pretty excited. And um, it's also nice for me to look back and be like, this is what I've done. <laughs> no, like, I had a pretty cool year. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And um, just to wrap up, and I, I feel like I, I just I do want to bring it up. Um, the the whole the, the situation at the World Championships with Team USA was a um, a very eventful on social media. Now, mm -hmm. not asking for your like opinions, not to say that, but from what you saw on social media, um, like how could you what like it might like how do you even kind of even like where, where do you even start with everything because there was so many there's so much stuff coming out of it there's so many opinions you know what i mean mm -hmm. from your perspective being on the other side 
what what came to your mind when you saw all of this come out like every day and there was new there were new um updates every day about the situation right so i had like i guess two main thoughts was i looked at the big picture and i thought wow like this is a problem like really in the world that women are paid l less than men you yeah. know like for the same job women are being paid less so um I thought like this was a really good thing that the U.S. team was doing, standing up for their rights and standing up to have equal pay to the men's team. And then on the other hand of me, the hockey player was like, I want to play against them. Like I want them to be in the tournament because I don't want to play against some random people they're going to put on the ice. Like I want to be playing against their top players and their team and have it be like the real world championships. You know, so I think I was mm -hmm. always hopeful that it would get worked out and that we would be playing against them. Yeah. Um, but I also knew that this was like something much bigger than hockey and bigger than um, really like it was for women. Yeah, no, absolutely. And like I said, I, didn't, I don't. I'm not gonna ask a tough question. I just wanted to know from your perspective because it was huge on social media. Every day I saw something new about mm -hmm. it. Every day it was like I couldn't. It was the big topic for two, three um, weeks on my on my social media. So Aaron, like. Do you want to chime in with, with something from your perspective? or? Yeah, absolutely. I think they um, they identified it as a group, like who and how they wanted to get their message across. And like Spoon said, I agree. It needed to, I mean, it was about something more than just hockey. It was about women in general and women in sport. And I think that's great that they were able to do that. And they did it in a good way. They got, um, they got it out there on social media. And once it's out there on social media, it can spread so quickly. Um, and especially with the players that they have and how um, how well followed they are, um, like you have Hillary Knight, you have Megan Duggan, like all those people, and Amanda Kessel, like you know what I mean. So they have yeah. those players that have a big platform for themselves, and that allowed them to get it out even farther. And then obviously, I mean, the list goes on and on for them. But um, yeah, they use they use their individual kind of, I guess, platforms to get it out there, and it caught on in. The news world too it wasn't just social media random people tweeting about it right and, um, oh, and people understood how big of a deal it was and again like i said it, or like spoon said it wasn't just about the usa women's hockey team so no, and that's a very important uh, part they they were making a statement for everyone essentially it wasn't just for their team. It was it was a statement that involved their team, of course. But it was, and, and I think that's that. I think is one of the reasons why you saw a lot of NHL agents were tweeting out a lot of stuff. You saw the NHL PA was also behind them as well. So that was really important. But uh, yeah, no, um, we'll, we'll wrap up here. But I thank you both for coming on the show. I mean, it's um, unbelievable to see you girls um, go on the global stage and represent our country of Canada. And I love it, and thank you for doing that because it's it's unbelievable, and you put everything out there, and we really appreciate it. We're always going to support you, so just thank keep it going much. and don't stop. Thanks. We will. And, and uh, <laughs> Spoons, um, where can people follow you on social media? Where can they follow maybe some of the projects that you're involved with? Uh, my Twitter and Instagram is at Nat Spooner 5 and then mm -hmm. on Facebook just search Natalie Spooner and the page Perfect. should hopefully pop up <laughs> Aaron what about you uh, both Instagram and Twitter are Ambrose underscore 13 Perfect. so neither well, one of us actually have our numbers that we wear <laughs> yeah yes. it's, it's true but uh, yeah well, thank you Aaron thank you Natalie this has been Pop Trunative. thank you very much you, you can catch previous episodes of Pop Trinative on our YouTube page and our SoundCloud and iTunes for audio only. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and in a few months, the popturnative.com website will be up. There'll be more content as well. We're excited to get that launched. So thank you. Keep track of uh, everything going on with uh, Natalie Spooner and Aaron Ambrose on social media. And until next time, this is PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.